and say go. How's it going, guys? I'm Cody. And this is Eli, and t- welcome to Commander Cafe. Today we are having a deck tech on <laughs> Infect Hapatra. It's Cody's deck, and it does exactly what it says it does. It's uh, going to kill people with 10 Infect damage or more. It's usually a lot more. <laughs> I don't know why you sound so sad. I am. This is probably the most excited I've been to do a deck tech in a long time. <laughs> I'm excited to do this one. Um, the more I've played with Infect, the more I just love it as a mechanic and commander. Um, I know it's very polarizing, and a lot of people think it's overpowered, um, it's not fair, it's cheap. They think that it's the 10 Infect and commander is too low. Since we have 40 life, it should be 15 or 20. I completely disagree with that. Infect is not a strong deck in itself as it is. Um, and it does a lot of good stuff for a commander. Um, it makes faster games. Because a lot of times what happens if you're playing a dedicated Infect deck. You will kill one person pretty quick. Then the other two people will kill you. So now you two people are out. What is normally a multiplayer game now turns into a 1v1. So if you're trying to get as many games in as possible... Infect's a great way to do it. Also, facing Infect can teach you to be a better deck builder because it makes you lower your mana cost um, to get blockers out, um, which is good. Also, it's cheap. This deck is a little over $100, and over 20 of that is Skidrix. So the, and the rest of that is mostly lana base, is mana base. So that, like, most of the... Inf- <laughs> Why you look so sad? I, I, I just want to point out the whole cheap. <laughs> In a different meaning of the word. <laughs> Th- this is just my saltiness from having died twice to Infect from a different deck of yours. Yeah. Uh, y- yesterday. Y- <laughs> so the thing is, like, Infect, I think, is actually stronger in decks that don't run Infect as their main theme. Um, things that have Blight Steel, have Triumph of the Horde, and the equipment that gives it Infect... I think are actually stronger because people don't see it coming and it can win out of nowhere. With this, people see it coming. The creatures are normally underpowered for their mana cost, so you're paying two for a 1-1 one, one with Infect um, a lot of the times. But, like I said, they were cheap. Most of the, those creatures are under a dollar. Even the bombs we're going to be talking about later that are huge. Um, outside of Skitherix, they're all pretty cheap. Um, also, it can be fun. Like If you guys give it a chance, I feel like a lot of the hate Infect gets... People haven't played Infect against Infect that much. Um, because, I, I, of course, I'm usually the one running Infect. But I think it's fun. Adds excitement to the early game. that Because most games um, were ramping it out early. And whoever gets targeted first by the Infect player, now they have a clock. It's like, I can't just sit back and ramp up the first few turns. I have to get something out. I have to stabilize and find answers to this. So yeah, I think Infect is a good... Uh, mechanic, I think 10 is good for it, for the poison counters for Commander. And a big reason for that, I think, is because you have to keep in mind when you're doing um, regular life damage to each player, I don't have to deal 4 damage to a player to kill them. I only have to do maybe 10 damage because the other two people are going to be doing damage to them as well. If I'm the only infect player at the table, I have to do 10 damage to each person to kill them my way. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, and you're going to be a target, so you're probably not going to get that off. So, overall, Hippatra is pretty good for Infect. Uh, I think she's probably the best Infect commander. Yeah, Um, she reduces the Infect's weakness in the late game uh, due to all of the Death Touch blockers that she creates. mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, Overall, she she has a good synergy with the Neg 1 counters that comes from uh, Infect as well. Yeah, the fact that the... um, Creatures deal damage in Infect gives you those um, blockers. You have 1-1 one, one Death Touchers. People aren't going to want to swing into you on the ground. Um, so it does a really good ap- job of protecting you with those tokens. Um, that's why I think Apatra is so good with Infect. And uh, I love playing her. If you're playing Infect, a few things to know, a few tips for you, is the important thing is knowing who to target first. You have to figure out who's going to be the biggest threat to you and who you can let hang around for a bit. Who has flyers versus ground assault with this deck um, because those snakes will attack you or will protect you. So if you're playing against a token strategy on the ground or a zombie deck and the other one is playing dragons and the other one is playing 
cats or um, wizards or whatever. Attack the dragon player first. Get them out because you don't have a lot of answers for flyers. Whereas the zombie deck, I can, I, I th with this deck, I've actually pumped out more um, death touch snake tokens than the goblin player in our group. I was out token generating him. My infect players were killing his. He couldn't swing into me because all of his creatures were going to die, and I still had more snakes. So, very strong deck. Um, but knowing who to target first will go a long way with this deck. So overall, the stats for this deck. You have 9 card draw, 9 ramp, 2.5 board wipes, <laughs> uh, kind of a questionable amount of targeted removal. Yeah, the, the target removal, it's it's so variable in this deck because how do you like count the 1-1 one -one counters? How do you count the death touch snakes? Mm -hmm. Like, if you're counting all the minus 1, minus 1 counters that are going to add up, you have a lot of target removal in your creature base. Yeah. Uh, you have 24 infect creatures, so that, that makes up for a lot mm -hmm. of that targeted removal. Uh, 11 to 13 pump spells, and 37 lands. Yeah, so um, if there was anything I might change about this, was I increased the card draw a little bit and took away a bit of the ramp, because a lot of the infect creatures are low mana cost, and the you want the card draw so that you're spewing out infect creatures, drawing more to play them as well. Um, you can just easily play all of your stuff early in a board white pits and you're dead. Because mm -hmm. without card draw, you have no way to replenish yourself. So what about the board wipes? Why do you, why do you have less than normal? So the, the board wipes I kept low because you can usually deal with most creatures by making them small with counters. Um, if I can give stuff like a 5-5, five, five, a couple 1-1, one, one, or minus 1, minus 1 counters on them with Infect, or other ways, this deck does have other ways to put those on, okay, it's hitting me for 2. I don't usually care that much. So if I can um, deal with them that way, and keep my snakes as blockers to deal with ground threats that way, I'll usually have the biggest board, and I don't want that wiped out. And I can usually handle the rest of other players' boards and shrink their boards in other ways. Um, like I said, target removal, hard to calculate. Um, I do have a couple kill spells, um, but I have Infect, Proliferate, and other 1-1 one -one counter cards um, to make snakes, so there's a lot of way to, ways to kill creatures. Um, so I don't feel the board wipes are as necessary in this deck. Okay, so moving on to card draw. Best card draw spell coming up first. So we have Caress of Phyrexia. Three colorless and two black for a sorcery. Target player draws three cards, loses three life, and gets three poison counters. So, the reason I like this over probably some of the others, like lose two life, draw two cards, is because it's flexible. It can be used on opponents to kill them. If you give them seven um, inf poison counters and they board wipe and they feel safer, you can just be like, oh, you're going to draw three cards and take three poison counters and kill them straight out that way. But you can a lot of times you'll end up using this on yourself to draw those cards because you don't care about losing that life and you don't care about poison counters because you're probably the only one with infect creatures in your deck. Next up we have Rot Wolf, which is two colorless and a green for an infect wolf 2-2. Two -two. Uh, whenever a creature dealt damage by Rot Wolf, this turn is put into the graveyard, you may draw a card. So this is great um, because it's card draw on those smaller creatures, if you can do that. Um, the other thing I like to do is turn it into a pinger with a few of the um, equipment that m makes a creature ping tap to deal one damage to something. So you can tap, it deals that damage um, since it's not combat damage. Or in fact doesn't care about combat damage versus regular damage, kind of like death touch. It give, puts a 1-1 one -one counter on there, you can just continuously whittle a creature down, draw a card from it without even having to attack with it. Next up we have Skull Clamp. One of the best cards in the deck. One mana, equipment, equipped creature gets plus one, minus one. Whenever equipped creature dies, you draw two cards and equip of one. So the idea is with all these snake tokens, I can just pay one, draw two cards, sacking a token. Do, the, do it again until I have a full hand again. And next up, we have probably one of my more common Golgari uh, enchantment yeah, this, draws. Yeah, this, this one goes good in any black 
green deck. I almost said black blue. Uh, so it's Death Reap Ritual. Two colorless, black and green, for an enchantment with Morbid. At the beginning of each end step, if a creature died this turn, you may draw a card. So the fact that this is each end step makes it so much better. If it was just yours, it wouldn't be as good. But the fact that each end step that comes around at the table, you're getting the chance to draw a card if a creature died makes it good. The, it doesn't give you, like, if two creatures dies, it doesn't give you two card draws. It's only one per turn, but even then, that's usually enough. Yeah. And next up, we have your ramp spells, uh, starting with Awakening Zone, which is two colorless and a green for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may create 0-1 El colorless Eldrazi spawn creature token with sacrifice this creature to add uh, a colorless mana to your mana pool. Yep. And also along the same idea, we have From Beyond, which is three and a green um, enchantment. Beginning of your upkeep, create a 1-1 one, one colorless Eldrazi um same thing, sacks to add one man, one colorless to your mana pool. But it also has one in green, sack it, search your library for an Eldorazi card, which this deck doesn't care about. Um, so the reason these are in here is because it's more tokens, um, and tokens can help you block, which in fact needs you. It needs to be able to defend itself, and they can ramp you if, um, if you get enough out. With uh, also the ability to stick Skull Clamp on for a bunch mm -hmm. of really cheap cards. Yep. Um, yeah, these, again, Skull Clamp gives you that, so you're getting at least one of these to sack each turn if you want to. And um, one thing to note, because you are making a lot of tokens with this deck, um, you can put great, or Crater Hoof Behemoth in here. It's amazing. It will absolutely win you the game in this deck. I don't have it because it's in my, my only version's in Titania right now. Um, but it's definitely one to put in here, because if you have all these tokens, suddenly all your infect guys are just huge with trample mm -hmm. so you're swinging with a 2020 infect trample creature with all these tokens out yeah next up we have cryptolith right one colorless and a green for an enchantment creatures you control have tap add one mana of any color to your mana pool again taking advantage of those tokens is the key way that this this deck is going to ramp um i know it's in mono green mono green has a lot of ways to ramp but i feel like this is probably the best way to take advantage of all the tokens um with so many tokens and cheap creatures with your infect creatures this this card's amazing i think it goes in a lot of green decks and um especially anything with token strategies this is auto include next up we do have the few board wipes and um these first two are kind of the reason that i have the half of a board wipe in there um just because of how they act so so starting off, we have Contagion Engine, which is six colorless, an artifact. When it enters the battlefield, put a neg one, neg one counter on each creature target player controls, and you can pay four to, and tap it to proliferate, then proliferate again. Mm -hmm. And then we also have Carnifex Demon, which is four and two black, and is a six six flyer with, when it enters the battlefield, put two, with two one one counters on it. You pay neg one, one black. Neg ones. Neg one, neg ones, yep. Um, which automatically it comes in and creates a snake for you. Um, then you can pay a black, remove a 1-1 one, one counter from Carnifex Demon, put a, uh, a neg one, neg one counter on each other creature. So the downside of that is if you have a bunch of snakes, it's going to kill them. So you don't want to do this then. But if you need to weaken the board state, um, the plus side is even if, if you're wiping a bunch of those out, if your opponents have huge boards... Um, actually, no, it doesn't even matter because it puts the 1-1 one, one counter on your snake so you get another snake in response to that. Mm -hmm. And then each of your opponent's creatures are getting the minus 1, minus 1 counter, which gives you more snakes. Yeah. So both of these, they're not true board wipes, um, but they give us a ton of tokens and they weaken their opponent's creatures all at the same time. Next up, we have Pernicious Deed, a colorless black and green for an enchantment with Pay X and sacrifice Pernicious Deed to destroy each artifact, creature, and enchantment with converted mana cost X or less. I think this may be also part of the that $100 price tag. Um, I think it is a little more expensive. Mm -hmm. um, but the fact that it's a 3-drop enchantment that just sits out there and you can target what you want to remove. So if I have a Scytherix out, I can just wipe everything smaller than that out. Yeah. Um, 
And then the next one is one that we both really enjoy, mm-hmm. Decree of Pain. Six colorless and two black for a sorcery. Destroy all creatures. They can't be regenerated. And draw a card for each creature destroyed this way. It also has cycling for three colorless and two black to... Uh, and when you cycle... Uh, it, um, yeah, reduces... Or all creatures get neg two. Yep. They aren't neg two counters. Turn, yeah. yeah, they aren't counters, so we won't get the snakes from that ability. Um, but if you absolutely have to wrath... Um, is a Wrath card with card draw, which this deck needs to keep going. And if you have a like a t- bunch of tokens out, or a bunch of small infect creatures, then this is going to draw you a ton of cards. You'll be able to keep going and reset your board faster than anyone else out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, next off, we have all of your infect creatures. Yep. Uh, most of them are under a dollar. However, the one we're starting with is the most expensive. Yeah, this one, I think I looked at him up. He's around $22 right now. Um... So. Worth it, but he's definitely very pow- powerful, can just wipe someone out, especially with some of the pump spells we'll get to later. But So it is Skithrix, the Blight Dragon. Three colorless and two black for a legendary creature dragon skeleton. With flying and infect, he's a 4-4. You can pay one black to, ga- to give him haste and two black to regenerate him. So you're not usually casting this unless you can give it haste the same turn and attack. Um... So they have a 4-4 flyer coming at them, and then we also have pump spells, some of which are at least one we can cast for free um, and just make him lethal. So he's very dangerous. He's a flyer. The fact that he's flying and so big just makes him so dangerous. Next up we have Phyrexian Vat Mother. Two colorless and two black for a horror uh, with 4-5, and it has infect, and at the beginning of your upkeep, you get a poison counter. So it puts you on kind of a 10-turn clock if they let this stay out, but you've probably won by then. Um, you don't really care about getting the poison counter, because like I said, you're usually the only one playing Infect at the table. Um, so it doesn't really bother you. And a 4-5 Infect for 4 mana is extremely good. So Yeah. Next up, Phyrexian Swarmlord. 4 colorless, 2 green insect horror uh it's a four four uh with infect and at the beginning of your upkeep put a one one green insect creature with infect onto the battlefield for each poison counter your opponents have Mm -hmm. so this one um i don't have parallel lives or doubling season in this deck but those would be great includes if you had the budget for them um both because hypatra it would double her snakes and double these um insect creature tokens which are Great blockers. I would just leave these back to block. Um, whenever they do block, they'll die, but you'll put a one one or minus one minus one counter on something because they do have infect, so you'll get a snake in an exchange. So it's like getting two tokens for the price of one. Mm-hmm. And last up on this part of the list, we have Putrefax. Three colorless and two green for a horror with trample, haste, and infect. He's 5 3, and at the beginning of the end step, sacrifice him. This is probably the card that has won me, killed the most players in this deck. Um, the trample and haste is huge. Um, so you can just, in the fact that you're going to sw- sack him at the end step, um, you just swing wildly with him. I don't care if he dies because he's going to die anyway. Um, and this deck does have some recursion um, capabilities. It's in black and green. So you can bring it back, attack again, um, it's amazing how much work this does, especially if you can pump it, because um, it already has trample. So if you there's pump spells that give it like plus seven, plus seven, or equipments that give it double strike, you're just usually killing someone with this card. So next up, some of your pump spells. It is time to pump you up. <laughs> so starting <laughs> off, we have become immense, five colorless and a green for an instant with delve. So each card you exile from your graveyard. While casting, pays for one of the colorless mana. And target creature gets plus six, plus six until end of turn. So this one is amazing because your creatures are going to die pretty quickly. They are small. Um, so they will. you'll have a lot of stuff in the grave. And you'll have a lot of, if you have a lot of these pump spells already in the grave, a lot of times you can cast this for one green mana. So you're leaving one green mana open attacking... And then giving something plus six, plus six, which will a lot of times kill people. If mm-hmm. So 
it, it kind of forces people to once they play the against this deck, they realize they have to block every creature, which you have to do with Infect. You have to try and block every creature you can, because if you leave even a one-one unblocked, if they can pump it up, you can just be dead on the spot. Next up, we have Larger Than Life, one colorless and a green for a sorcery. Target creature gets plus four, plus four, and gains trample until end of turn. I think this is the only sorcery speed pump spell I have in the deck, um, but it's just it's really good. It's really effective. Um, giving your infect creatures trample is huge. Um, giving them plus four, plus four. So like I said, your one one is now a five five with trample, and that's not counting any other pump spells you may play it after um, blockers are declared or during combat. So. Next up, we have Invigorate, two colorless and a green for an instant. If you control a forest rather than pay its mana cost, you may have an opponent gain three life. Target creature gets four four until end of turn. So this one's a lot of fun just because there's so many times like I can attack and have no mana open, and they'll be like, oh, well, he can't pump that. I'm just going to take the damage. And then it's like, I'm going to let you gain three life and kill you with infect because I don't really care about giving you three life. Mm -hmm. um, so this one has a lot of versatility, a lot of power here. And the last one we're listing off is Stonewood Invocation, which is a three colorless and a green for an instant. It has split seconds, so as long as it's on the stack, players can't cast spells or activate abilities that aren't mana abilities. And target creature gets plus five, plus five, and shroud until end of turn. Yeah, so this one is huge just because if they try and target removal, your infect creature that's attacking them, you can give it plus five, plus five, um, and hexproof. And they can't respond to it. With Split Second, um, Split Second just makes this card so powerful. I think Split Second is highly underrated in Commander. You can just shut down so many shenanigans with Split Second cards. Um, and the fact that this can respond to a removal spell, give it Hexproof, and pump it up, and you're protected from counter spells or any other shenanigans that can go on. Um, a lot of power in this card. Mm -hmm. Um, we already talked about Crater Hoof. So, last thing I would like to say is give Infect a chance. It's not that scary in multiplayer formats. It rarely wins when there's four or more players. Um, if you get under four players, then yeah, it's really hard to deal with. The Infect player's probably going to win that game. Um, but don't just see a player flip an Infect deck over and hate them out. And just think, oh, they're playing cheap. They they don't play fair. They they don't play fun. They might think it's fun, so let them play how they want. And let it teach you how to become a better deck builder and commander player. Um, does a lot of interesting things to the game and forces politics from the first player being targeted. Because if you're the first person being targeted, you're like you're begging other people for help. Hey, can you guys help me deal with this infect? Because I don't have ways to deal with it. Um, so the fact that it can kind of create that kind of interesting political aspect of the game I think is very interesting. On that same note, if someone else in your playgroup is playing Infect, I highly recommend just swing all out at them every turn. <laughs> like, they, they are the person to get rid of. So, go for yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, if you're playing this deck, you are going to get targeted, and you have to expect that. This isn't a deck that you play because you're planning to win, but it is a lot of fun. It's very fast. Um, if you're a very aggro and fast-oriented player, um, you'll probably like this deck. And you, you will most likely get one kill, at least. Um, you'll probably die next, because um, the other people do have to gang up to answer you. Um, but you can also use it as political stuff. Like, hey, I'm, I'm helping take care of this guy over here, so don't attack me until I take care of this person. Because with Infect, you really do have to target one person, and you have to kill that one person in most cases, unless you're playing like Atraxa or... Saskia decks with Infect that can um, spread the love around, so to speak. Um, but most of the time, you're targeting one person and taking them out. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Well, we'll have a tapped out link in the yep. box below. Um, if you have any cards that you think we should include, then list them off in the comments. Send us tweets. Uh, contact us however you choose. Mm -hmm. um, Let us know what you guys think of Infect. Um, why do you guys hate it? Why do you guys think if you think the infect should be go up to 15 or 20? Why do you think that argument is the case? Have you seen someone in your playgroup play infect and just kill everybody? Because 
a lot of times that, from what I've seen that doesn't happen so yeah um, uh, give a, give us your thoughts uh, we'd like to hear it um, also give us your thoughts on future videos anything you want to see from us let us know mm-hmm. um, we're always open to new deck ideas um, modifications to existing decks uh, feel free to send us a tapped out link and see if we can evaluate your deck yep. give you advice anything like that yep. uh, we are working our way up to 100 subscribers mm-hmm. once we get there we're going to try and do some sort of giveaway so uh, make sure you share this to your friends and like and subscribe hit that bell notification so you get all of our videos um, we usually post on every Friday in the afternoon so make sure to subscribe and keep an eye out for us thanks for watching Commander Cafe 